Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. In this video, I am going to talk about 2D simulation post processing. Post processing is an important tool and this we require for making report or manuscripts. In this video, I am going to cover every details of post processing. This is going to be a 20 to 30 minute session. If you watch this particular session, you will be able to do any kind of post processing. For 2D simulations, I will make another video for 3D post processing. So, we will start with a simple simulation which we generally come across and I generally do for any kind of teaching. So, I will be taking heat transfer in solid and we will be solving for the Laplace equation that is solid heat transfer through a solid. So, we will be taking time dependent solution study. Once it is added, then we will go for yeah. So, everything has been added. We define it in centimeter, the geometry, right clicking, taking a square and say all the sides are of 5 centimeter. So, yeah, the block is created. Now, in the material, we will be adding copper. You all know about this. So, the people who are new to this video, for them, I am doing this again. So, I write copper and then click enter. It will look for copper. Yeah, yeah. So, we have to choose one of them. Say copper, copper solid. So this one we take copper oxidized. We just need the material properties. So this is fine. Now we go to the heat transfer in solids, right clicking there, taking temperature and keeping say all these three walls at some low temperature, say the room temperature. And the top wall we put at a higher temperature, say this is kept at 600. Kelvin 600 Kelvin ok so now for meshing we click build all this is not good so we go for extra fine fine now let me solve this particular problem so yeah we'll wait for some time the simulation has started, it will take some time. So, material property K for solid is not defined, it is showing. Okay, so let's go. Thermal conductivity is not given. Let me look for the accurate value of thermal conductivity. But for the time being, we can consider any uh, abrupt value, say 100. This may not be the correct value, but yeah, we run it again. Yeah, simulation has started. It will take uh, some time. Okay, let me see what happened at one centimeter. Yeah, this has started flowing. So, I guess the value which I took is less. So, what I can do is I can reduce the square size to one centimeter. Then I'll have a better profile. Now, I'll take another small rectangle section here. Say this rectangle will have a height 0.2. Okay, so again I run the simulation. I hope this will work now. So let us wait for some more time. Once the simulation finishes, then I will be doing the post processing one by one. Okay, so this distribution looks nice. We'll be going ahead with this and uh, now, 
for this particular case we will be interested in looking at the isothermal lines or iso temperature lines so for that what you need to do uh, when you plot temperature under temperature you may have multiple options suppose so wherever whenever you plot something if you right click there you will be seeing multiple options like here we have lines contour so if i click on contour and plot it it shows the temperature contour now what you can do is if you click the level on it will show the temperature like this particular line indicates 352.8 temperature we can reduce the number of levels so that you can see it properly you can see those are the points so i am taking a, an example of temperature contours similarly if you are working with heat trans uh, fluid flow or some other physics say electric field you'll be getting say electric field lines or something so whenever you have some by default plot you right click there and look at the options and try to play around with the options like in the more plots you will be having several options you can just play around with this and you can just see what happens so for this particular one if i just take any one of this example say we take maximum minimum point so yeah we click on plot so before that we just disable this contour option we yeah uh, this is okay let me delete this contour option and plot the maxima minima so you can see it is showing the maxima and minimum value so minimum value is 293.150 and maximum value is 446.575 so this is how you can actually calculate maxima minima and you can also try other options like let me check for this particular one like uh, you have i don't know this histogram uh, will work for this case or not okay for this one histogram doesn't have any meaning for this particular plot and that's why we can actually delete this one so the idea is you have to play around with the available options and then only you will come to know what what are the options available and how exactly you can modify your plot now the most important part is data export sometimes what happens the quality of this particular diagram is not good so we may wish to plot it in some other software like origin or take plot or some other software which you generally use so for that whenever you have a plot if you want to get that data what you need to do is you need to right click there and you will be getting an option add data to export if i click here then it will ask for the type of file so say i'll be saving the files as txt data so let me create a folder here say post processing this is temperature contour say temperature contour so after you save it you have to click on export otherwise the data will not be generated so don't forget to click on export after saving the file at a particular location so now we try to look at the folder say t contour you can see you have actually generated data of temperature at different x and y coordinates and multiple data so based on the number of grid points you have generated multiple data points so you can actually play around with the data 
so this is the data for the entire space now what if i want to know what is the temperature along a uh, along a certain cut section or certain cut line say i want to see the temperature at the vertical cut line so for that what we need to do we need to go to the data set right click on the data set and you can see there are multiple options i'll be taking the cut line to the options out of these two options now i want at the middle so the middle is x equal to 0.5 y starts from 0 and it goes up to 1 okay this is y starts from 0 goes up to 1 and x is for both the points 0.5 so what am i doing basically i am defining this point and this point so the first point is 0.5 comma 0 so it is here and the second point is 0.5 comma 1 so this is here so we have taken two points now if i plot one line will be selected along this line i want to plot the temperature so how to do that for that you need to go to the result right click on the result you need to click on 1d plot group so under 1d plot group you will be seeing it is asking for the data set that means you want to plot something along that particular line which you have chosen as cut line 2d now whenever you want to plot something you need to have some data and when you solve something in comsol it basically stores data in at the storage now what you need to do you need to tell it cut line 2d1 instead of solution now in the cut line 2d you need to ensure that your your data is coming from the right solution because sometimes you may run multiple solutions in the same file then in the drop down menu you will be having multiple options i can show you that one suppose i go here study i add another study okay uh, i add say stationary study for the time being now under stationary also i solve the same physics so i click on compute so what will happen it will also solve for the stationary problem it also looks the similar now if i go to the cut line 2d you can see in the drop down two options are being shown now here you need to define which data set you want to have suppose i want to choose the data set the first data set that is study one so i choose it now i come to the 1d plot group so my cut line 2d is defined it is asking for the time selection because if you remember the study one that was a time dependent study that means you have solution or you have stored data at different time steps so it is asking you whether you need to plot for a particular time step or you need to plot for all the time steps initially i'll show you for all the time steps now in the 1d plot group again you right click and take the line graph so in the line graph you are basically plotting temperature along that line now i click on plot so you can see multiple lines are coming because here I have defined that you plot for all the time steps. Now I can change my command. I can say you plot only for the last time step. If I change it and plot, you can see it is plotting for the last time step. Similarly, you can change from the list any time step you can take. Suppose I plot at point 2, so it is like this. Now I again go back to all and plot it. Now, sometimes this kind of plots are not applicable for your manuscript. So I need to save the data. So again, you go to the final step. There is a line graph. Right click on that. Oh, not here. One minute. Yeah, my computer got hanged. So just a minute. sorry for the inconvenience it takes some time let me pause the video 
yeah now it's working fine so I go to line graph again uh, yeah I go to line graph I right click on line graph and again go to add plot data to export again the same thing so this is your temperature along say cut vertical line so I give that name to the file I click on save and then click on export so you can see another data file has been generated now you have two columns temperature along the y axis only because along the cut line we have plotted it so we learned about how to plot a certain data along a certain vertical cut line now instead of vertical cut line you can make it horizontal cut line as well for that you need to fix the y say 0.5 and 0 0.5 and your x has to be say 0 to 0.5 0 to 1 basically because length of the uh, square is 1 so we took this particular line and the plot will now show the temperature along this line so this is how the temperature along that line changes you can again uh, export that data so I told you how to plot and how to export data now uh, I'll show you to do some other th other things like how to do an average property how to do how to actually calculate area average or line average because suppose uh, I have taken a rectangular section if you remember uh, during the geometry selection I took a rectangle so what I want is let me go back to the temperature file I want what is the average temperature at this particular section that means this rectangular section I want to know the average temperature for that what I need to do I need to go to the derived values I need to right click there you can see there is an option average so I can take surface average now I need to choose the surface so this is the surface I want to work on and then just click on evaluate so it is evaluating the average temperature for different time step if you remember again uh, the, that was a time dependent study so it is showing for all the time step so the data has been generated even you can plot this data so I click there then I press control shift down arrow it will choose all the data you can see there is another option of plotting table graph if you click here it will show you how the average temperature with respect to time is changing for this particular area so this kind of uh, I mean averaging you can do so in the derived values you have multiple options like you have integration option suppose I want to do, uh, do a surface integration on the same surface I want to do surface integration of temperature so I click I took temperature and I click on evaluate so it will be evaluating the integral of temperature in that particular area so again I can plot it and I can see how that property is changing with respect to time you can see the nature is same but the values are different because initially we took average but here we did not take the average we take integral of T dt so integral of T dt and average temperature uh, those two things are different so you need to be sure which property you are trying to calculate based on that you need to define your function so in the derived value we learnt about averaging we learnt about integration so you can see the volume integration will be applicable when you are working with uh, three dimensional cases but this is two dimensions so only surface and line integral would work so let me do a line integral suppose I want to do a line integral of temperature along that line so again if I temperature is already selected here if I click on evaluate it will give the average temperature only along this line so similarly whatever you do 
you can get the accurate data so you can make use of these derived values this is very important so i talked about derived values how to calculate average how to calculate maxima minima here also you have maxima minima you, if you see so maxima suppose line maximum so this line maximum temperature so i want to know along this line what is the maximum temperature so if i just click here it will evaluate maximum temperature at different times so similarly you can calculate minimum you can calculate other things uh, line measurement it will give you the measurement of the line so if i click here and evaluate so it is giving me the length because sometimes you may not know what is the length of that particular line so you also may need to know about the dimension that's why this measurement option calculates the dimension and this is very useful so we are left with uh, exporting images so suppose uh, if we go to temperature here so you can see there is an option of image snapshot you can click there so when you will be clicking there there are pixels you can define automatically it will be given 640 480 and the dpi is very less so dpi less means the quality of image will not good so i can change the dpi to 300 i can even change the dimension say i would want 1200 by something 900 uh, and i can lock the aspect ratio from here i can change the format of the image say T I double F T if I can do and there are some option if I include it all those things will be exported if I exclude only this main image will be exported so I'll show you uh, I go to the option browse post processing so temperature contour I can write and I can save it here click on ok okay so transparent background can only be used for png image okay so we can uh, do a png okay so we save as png yeah it worked i'll show you that the image yeah you can see this image has been generated and this image looks better because this is a 300 dpi image now i was talking about this include option if you just uncheck it then you will see like in this initially all the bars and everything was there and if i just name it rename it to temperature contour 2 so i'll show you in this diagram you can see there are no bars there are no scales nothing is there so similarly you can just play around if you just need this particular diagram you can exclude the option now uh, we talked about exporting image now let uh, we also talked about changing the dpi and all and now we can talk about exporting other options so if i right click on export you can see there is one option animation and under animation there are two options player and file so initially I'll talk about player I click on there and you click on play then you can see how the temperature profile is changing with respect to time so this was not properly visible because of the uh, visible because of the time dilation so I change it this is the display each time frame for more time say for 0.5 seconds so it will make the video slower and I can be I will be able to visualize it so you can see that is how the temperature profile is growing you can even change this one to say once again so it will make the file even slower so from the video what I understand I have not uh, worked in the appropriate time dimension because suddenly this was changing and uh, it is becoming in the equilibrium state so what i can do uh, i can change the time scale say to the millisecond 
so we can solve it for say 0 0.01 second so i'll click again on compute so i'm just uh, showing you when you do the post processing you understand your result better and based on your understanding you can reframe your simulation parameter the way i did here say after 0 0.01 the equilibrium has not reached so i run it for 0 0.1 second up to 0 0.1 second so this is the way again i'm telling from the post processing you learn about your system better and you reiterate like the way i'm reiterating so now i solve for 0 0.1 second so i hope the solution will be better at 0 0.1 yeah, ultimately we reached our target. So now I go to animation. Now if I play the video, you can see the temperature, how the temperature diffusion or heat diffusion is taking place with respect to time. So this video may be of importance for your manuscript or for your report making purpose. So what you need, how exactly you need to export the video for that you need to again right click on export you need to go to the option file now so this particular file is automatically chosen now so i will be saving this particular one as a gif so there are multiple options like you can change from here so what are the options available gif avi and webcam so i will prefer to uh, save it in GIF because in AVI the quality does not come good so I always save it in GIF now I just save it here say video so then you have to click on export don't forget every time you save something you need to click on export then only your file will be generated so you can see now the video is being generated if I go to the folder, you can see there is one video, but that is not being generated properly. Once this is done, then I will be able to open the video. Yeah, the export is done. I click on the video GIF and you can see the diffusion is being shown. So this is the way you can actually export your video. You can, you can again post process those video in some other software to make your desired output so i hope i covered almost most of the things not everything because there are vast amount of things available maybe i will try to make another video to 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 learn about the advanced post processing option in this video i talked about all the basic post processing option in the other video, I'll be talking about advanced level post processing. So today I'm stopping here. If my videos are helping you, kindly subscribe to our channel and share these videos with your peers.